Hello, I'm going to be doing a biography on Andre Durain. In his early life, he, well, let's start off, he was born on June the 10th, 1883 in Chateau, Chateau, France. He grew up in a middle class family. I believe his father was a pastry chef and served as a municipal counselor. Uh, he studied uh, in his I think he was like 15 when he started all this, but he studied in Paris at St. Croix in, you can see that, I'm not going to try and pronounce all that stuff, I'm sorry. <laughs> he was learning how to paint at these places. He also studied engineering, but quit in 1898. He hated studying, but loved painting, and he got an award in 1895 for drawing. Durain left school after being influenced by Henry Matisse and Maurice de Vlamnik. 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 Yeah. Durain eventually met Matisse and Matisse became his teacher. Matisse was like, I think he was like over 20 years older than him at the time. So people considered him his teacher, but I think in reality they were just like collaborating together. Um, Durain had to stop painting when he was enlisted in the military in 1902. At this time was when Favism started to develop. He was still talking to uh, Matisse at the time, and I think they were like starting up this whole mo art movement together. Midlife, Durain completed his military service and started his work on Favism. I think I'm saying Favism right. I, I think. I'm sorry. Give me a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Fauvism, sorry, I've been pronouncing it wrong. Durain started to believe that Fauvism was his permanent art form. Durain meets Picasso in 1907 and starts doing research into Cubism, though I think that lasted like. It did not influence him at all, I don't think. I mean, it might have influenced him, but he did. He barely did any research into it. He was just becoming friends with Picasso. Durain enters the military again in 1914. And during this time, he illustrated Andre Breton's book named Mont de Piet. But after leaving the military, he prioritized aristocracy, like the social aspect of it, and somewhat abandoned his art friends, which was kind of sad. These are some art pieces that he worked on during like this period of his life, which is a little bit before the stuff I started talking about. In 1905 to 06, he made the Houses of Parliament. In 1905, he made Turning Road. 1905 to 06, he made The Dance. In 1906, he also made The Dancer. 1908, 1908, he made A Woman with Shaw. And he also made The Bathers in 1908. These are some pieces I included. Um, I think I included this one in my uh, site. Um, yeah, I did. I'm pretty sure. Charing Crossroads, The Trees, and La Estique. <laughs> I'm saying this so wrong. And now this part's crazy. So his late life... Uh, Durain's popularity spread all the way to Germany by the 1930s. Durain accepts an invitation to tour Germany in 1941, but for some reason he started supporting Germany and spreading propaganda at this point was the start of World War II. And so France is like, you can't, like they're not liking him now because, I mean, he's su spreading propaganda. It's not good. So he continued to work in Camborossi. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know how to say that. With his wife and his adopted son. But uh, in his midlife, he was, like, having an affair with, like, a bunch of different women that Picasso... Like, him, Picasso, Matisse, all of them were getting up on this stuff. And it was really weird. But finally, his wife... Like, I support the wife in this. The wife discovers the illegitimate son, divorces him, and gets a hold of all the finances. But unfortunately, Durain falls ill in 1953. He doesn't go blind blind, but his vision gets really bad. And then he gets hit by a truck and dies in September 8, in 1954. And I thought all of that happened so fast when I was reading up on this. I was like, holy crap. His life went downhill so fast. But um, yeah, <laughs> that's all I have about him. Uh,